we all have a mother. That is empirically true. That says nothing as to how that mother raised us or even if she was there. Suddenly, Mother's Day sounds tragic as we can think of absent mothers, drunk mothers, idiot mothers, trashy mothers, immature mothers, or uncaring mothers. The list can go on. We can look at opposing lists of present mothers, caring mothers, intelligent mothers, cool moms, strong moms, loving moms, supportive moms, mothers who push us in the right way. For this podcast, I interviewed my own mother. Her name is Annie. And, of course, I have my brother Ty with us as well. The interview did not go as I had intended. I warn you that we get into some pretty personal stuff. From the YouTube studios in Tucson, Arizona... This is the One Minute History Podcast. Here's your host, the hardest working man on the internet, Casanaya. Mother's Day has been caught up in the anti-consumerism backlash that started really in earnest in the 1970s. And some people have a point. This is just another opportunity to buy some meaningless things because that is the only way that we can express love. And God forbid you don't get your mother something for Mother's Day. The average person spent on Mother's Day gifts $173 in the United States. These are numbers from the 2015 United States Census Bureau. There are 44 million mothers, 4 million new babies each year, 100,000 jobs perhaps rely solely on Mother's Day. Single moms make up a population of 10 million and stay-at-home moms a population of 5 million. The most staggering number is that Mother's Day is now a $21 billion industry. Are you our mother? Yes, most definitely. (laughs) I'm your mother. (laughs) A likely story. (laughs) I like the sigh. (laughs) Okay. Um, When you sigh, especially to your <laughs> to the interactions of your sons uh is that something that makes you proud or is that something that that like what goes through your mind when we're being total buttholes i actually um do feel proud you do feel uh, proud yes because you you guys have a great bantering Mm -hmm. Uh, relationship that goes on and I love that your humor I always have well mom you were always but a little exasperated too sometimes okay yeah because you were always freaked out by it when we were little kids and we'd be like fighting in the car but we were play fighting and you freak out because we were really good at it we've (laughs) always been like a little too good at it that's probably what freaked me out how the hell are you doing this uh, yeah I was in a way, I think I was impressed. Yeah. Like, geez, those two are funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you don't need to be so complimentary, Mom. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> this is that's not what this is about, all right? What's the moment that you were most freaked out by us, like, fighting as, as little kids? And fighting, I mean, play fighting. We never got in an actual fight no. as, a ki- as kids. No. At all. I couldn't tell. That's that was those times. I thought it was real, and uh, I, I, that's what would scare me. That how are you not hurting each other? Well, it looks like you're hurting each other, and I don't like this. So you need to stop. Yeah, but we were making like lightsaber sounds while we were <laughs> while yeah. we were fighting. Well, not just that. The the lightsaber stuff. It was the wrestling and the throwing each other across the room. <laughs> that was mostly the cats. Like like. Like, he, I remember you telling me a story, and I don't remember this at all. Uh, I don't know if it was because of the head trauma or because I was just too young. (laughs) Uh But I remember you guys telling me a story about freaking out because I was just a baby. And because Cass had been watching um, wrestling on television, he was throwing me around. Yes. Doing, like, suplexes. Mom is nodding. 
Yes. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I I, <laughs> I mentioned to your father. Yeah. You need to tell Corey to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's dive deeper into this. Uh, was he an actual baby or was he like four or five? He was about two. That's a toddler. That's yeah. pretty small. Uh, yeah. And But a two-year-old can be thrown around as fun. <laughs> right. Their bones are still soft. Yeah. But And we had that pad thing. Why would you own that pad? <laughs> what Ma pad thing? That pad, that we, big pad thing yeah, that so you could what, fold out. What we had, for those, those who obviously don't know what we're talking about, we had this big old foam pad. It was almost like a, a bed by itself. Yeah. Not, not memory foam or anything. Oh, yeah. it, it, was, I, it was like I, a I couch used it, thing. Yeah. I used it to pad the couch cushions more. And you guys would pull it out and play with it. I, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the one that folds out into that big rectangle. It's like a big old bed. It, yeah. You could fold it out into a big portable bed. They don't sell them anymore. I don't know so why. A futon? Futon. Type of futon. Yeah, so it was like a futon without all the frame. It was just a big, thick pad. Foam. It was just foam. It was foam, yeah. And, and so you could... You Dad could... probably got that piece of crap somewhere. <laughs> he brought it home. <laughs> That's what he did. He would find stuff. Oh, this would be great for the guys, you know, the kids to play with. Yeah, and those... he brought it home, and we kept it home for a long time. I said, why did you bring that? It was, we... it was one of those, It was like... full of... So it was. It was, it was. It was probably one of those things that like someone else threw out. Right. And he happened to be driving by. And right. Like, yeah. It oh, was probably oh, one cool. of those things. That. Yeah. And yeah. he brought it. I up. remember jumping over the side of it onto it, like from from like the couch. F no, I'd sit a um uh like a bar stool chair behind it, and I'd reenact the scene from the third Star Wars where Chewbacca pulls that dude out from the ATST and throws him off the <laughs> off uh -huh. of it. I reenact that while the scene was going on yeah. with that pad and I, could, I I wouldn't be able to do it without that pad. Yeah. So it it may explain a lot of why we're stunt men now uh and why we're doing what we're doing now. It was just predestined because we had in that a way, pad. It? it was almost like predestined yeah. that you guys would end up doing something like that. I think we would have oh. converted anything we could just so we could You did. You did, did that a lot. lot. With mattresses and mattresses, all kinds of pillows. I remember uh, I remember couch couch cushions. We like when we uh when we moved to our second house in Kansas, we had a long stairway as opposed to like a bendy one that like had a had a middle section and yeah. we had just a long stairway. And two long stairways. It, uh, yeah, the basement. Well, we didn't do some do it so much in the basement. We did it in that. First He's talking hallway. about foolishness right now. Yeah, but yes. we, the foolishness happens on the second floor. Right. We well, we would we would get our our twin mattresses, which fit in there perfectly, <laughs> and we would slide them down so that they're like touching one another, and it would just be like this big old cushiony slide. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah, we yeah. would throw ourselves. <laughs> down and we would like roll and tumble wait like a minute down the... this is the first i've heard of this yeah really <laughs> honest to god yeah we when did you do they this did, they did that a lot we did that a lot i never saw you guys do that yeah, yeah we kinda, you must have not done it we probably kept it from you right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know you were doing that yeah yeah but yeah. imagine how fun that is mom it's okay at the, at the base of it we, were we have kids, a pad right? there so you're not, we're not landing on the linoleum, yeah. you know, we're landing on a pad at the hurt. end of yeah. the stairs. We never ever got hurt. We're just tumbling <laughs> there was like 30 feet there was yeah. down a 45 degree angle. Yeah. There was right. plenty of opportunity to get hurt. Cause yes, like, the banister. Like, the ban and like, well, yeah, the banister. The rungs the, along the, the way. Exactly, exactly. Like half, midway through you got all those rungs. <laughs> Our arm, our leg, <laughs> our face could have got caught halfway uh -huh. through. It just and smacked totally, something. Well, not even smacked it, just like completely broken off yeah, yeah, one yeah. limb. Anything. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. why you probably didn't tell me about it. Yeah. I, yeah, bet, I bet Dad yeah. knew about all this uh, shenanigans. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he did. Yeah. It was your sister we had, doing we had this? a lot of... Yeah, yeah I think, I yeah, think she was a little bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, she yeah. must have loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a lot of... It, it was, It's really great. I recommend this to any parent who has kids. Let your kids... Have some time on their own. So school ended about three o'clock. You guys didn't get home until six, yeah. six thirty. Yeah. We ha those three hours were ours. We got to do whatever we wanted, and we experimented. We figured things out. We uh, obviously we were, we were mini engineers. Well, obviously, at times with its limits, though. Like like we didn't want to. 
mom and dad to come home to something broken or one of us yeah. hurt or anything like that. Like yeah. it had its limits. And it to never it. happened. So right. yeah, that's yeah, why exactly. we like, were it, we didn't know a lot of this yeah. stuff. But that's okay. But yeah. it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. You guys didn't get hurt and whoever was there at the house, yes. your friends, they didn't get hurt. Because you trusted us. Yes, exactly. This is a good interlude into uh, kind of an issue that I wanted to bring up about modern parenting and and how 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 you parented us. So at this point, I just wanted to bring up a particularly telling statistic about modern parenting. This comes from a Pew Research study on the analysis of the American Time Use Survey. In 1965, parents spent an average of 12.5 hours total on child care per week. That number is now 60% higher at 21 hours in 2011. It also points to the fact that women still devote twice as much time as men do doing the childhood rearing. Forbes called it the more time is more parenting paradigm. And what have mothers got from this dramatic increase in time singularly devoted to their children? This increase has made more parents, particularly mothers, more stressed, sleep deprived, guilty, and anxious. In turn, their children are also more stressed. The author of the article talks about how a combination of mommy guilt and paranoia over childhood safety has led her to hover and feel like she needs to be intimately engaged always rather than just let her kids simply play at the playground by themselves. So there's just a lot more micromanaging that's going on of parents and their kids always just hovering and thinking that like they're going to save them from whatever junk they're getting into but that is completely foolish i think that if you just lord over your kids all the time they're never going to do anything uh bad but what it ends up happening is they don't end up doing anything creative or interesting. Um, free range parenting. Okay, that's a good name for it. Yeah. yeah. So letting your letting your kid walk to school. All right. You you let us walk to school. Yes, all okay, the in time. Al- yeah, in elementary school. Yes. And we were great. It, we were totally fine. Nothing was nothing was worse for it. That might be like looked down upon nowadays. How do you feel about that? About what that it's looked down upon yeah. nowadays. Well, I mean, do you, do you um, feel do you feel like there's any more threat now than there was back then when we were kids? Like, like it's like I don't know if, if it's necessarily increased as far as like predators and and people who might kidnap and other things like that. that like, and there is an answer to that. Why, yes, Cass, there is. The most recent study reported by the Department of Justice from 2002 showed that there were only 115 cases that were classified as a child being taken by a stranger. Children are far more likely to be in danger of living in an emotionally or physically abusive home. The news, however, reported this number as 800,000 abductions per year, according to this same study. So where is the discrepancy? The 797,500 people under 18 reported missing in 2002 include overstayed visits at a non-custodial parent's house, runaways, visitation right disputes, lost or abandoned children, individuals that can be reported multiple times, and also a slew of hoaxes or unfounded reports. And the Amber Alert System has been one of the greatest modern successes of childhood safety. Between 1996 and 2011, 572 children have been safely rescued due to an Amber Alert. So, back to the interview. I don't, I I think I agree with what Ty said, that there may not be an increase now of those dangers, but we're made more aware of them. Because if one incident happens, you know, a, a lost child, one in a million type thing, 
we're made so aware of it that all of a sudden the parents start hovering even more mm. for months and years and years, you know, t to their children. Yeah. And then it slacks down a little right. bit. In a way, and it's understandable too, though. Right. Like, of course, everybody's freaking out because you, of that one you thing. You obviously yeah. don't want that one thing to happen to your kid. But. I think it's completely motivated by fear. In the in the long term, it's 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 very it, it's damaging and it's just a waste of time. Eventually, your kid has to leave. That's another thing that parents seem to have problems with too, is that they don't want their kid to, to go away. But like at a, at, a, at a certain point, that is going to happen. So you have to prepare them up to that point to be fully adult and fully independent and fully responsible and have common sense and can get past all the crazy hormones that are running through them to make good decisions. Uh, I think respect comes into the picture yeah. as you're raising your children as a parent. You know, um, a lot of parents will say, I demand respect. You have to respect me. Well, that goes, goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And bringing you guys up and your sister... I tried to show that respect in some forms. Yeah, you. That's that's a big time thing with you, is that you you always had our respect because you earned our respect. And and I was working to earn your respect. Yeah, yeah. And and we were we were er, we were working constantly to earn yours. One of the the best things that ever kept me in trouble was. <laughs> Kept I, in I trouble? kept me out of trouble. Okay, out of trouble. <laughs> kept me out of trouble was I never wanted to disappoint you. Yeah, yeah. The disappointment. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't worried about. I wasn't ever worried about being punished. I wasn't ever worried about the time that I would have to, you know, when I was to be grounded. I was rarely ever. I was grounded once in my childhood, um, and I, like I, the punishment d didn't have anything to do with. I was a very good kid. I I never got into trouble. Utterly straight edge. Same thing with you. Yeah. And and whenever we were in <laughs> encountered with something that like okay this could go down a a, a dark path. <laughs> the only thing that the only thing that we would say to ourselves is like I I I, I can't bear the idea of disappointing. <laughs> disappointing you <laughs> yeah I, I guess if you if you would have done something yeah uh, I would have been surprised why yeah. Yeah. you did this yeah. why yeah. did you do this yeah and then we would have figured out and discussed it yeah, yeah. And that would have been the end of it well. I'm not mad I'm just disappointed disappointed <laughs> in you it's just yeah it's so much more hurtful <laughs> and none of you guys got in trouble like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, you got grounded that once. You know I don't think you, Ty, ever yeah, no, got grounded. No. Your well, sister didn't either. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure I did, but the, a grounding from you, at least in my case, was a night or a couple hours, and that that was it. Like it's not like I got like a full week or a month or something like that, like from doing something yeah. like really terrible. Um. Yeah. Because you guys didn't. Yeah, we didn't. And yeah. it was only after you all became adults that your sister faced some issues that would have... Yeah. You know, she was still yeah. living at home, but we couldn't ground her. Yeah. But she lost some of her privileges on her own because of the decisions she made yeah. on her own. Right. But we were there and we said, let's talk about it. We're here to help you. Yeah. And she earned back our trust. Yeah. She had she had a reformation period, you know. She had a dark yes. time there. Yes, she was working through issues and went back to school. Completely grabbed her life, and it was just yes. it was just so positive and healthy. And and now uh, has her master's, way smarter than either of us. Yeah. Um, Getting married in <laughs> September. Yeah, like. like it got it got a working for the government right now, An doing her dream job. job. Yes, it's just she's a scientist. She's a scientist. Yeah, we everything's are, we great. We are freaking actor stuntmen. We're idiots. <laughs> We're idiots. At, at the very least, at the very least, I don't have like 
I don't have to say like, uh, yeah, I have three degrees and I'm a stuntman or yeah, anything like that. Yeah. You know, like I'm not that pathetic. Well, how who's who's more <laughs> stupid, the stuntman who doesn't have three college degrees or the stuntman who does? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Have three bachelor's degrees and he's a stuntman. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. That's a hard question. <laughs> and if and if you ask her now, she would, she brags about you guys. Yeah, and we brag so, about her. Yeah, she's so proud of you guys. She's so proud of her brothers, and she tells yeah. people about you guys. Yeah. yeah, where she is. Well, we're definitely proud of her too. And that's we're mutual proud. respect for each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, any advice about a motherhood that you would that you would give something that you <laughs> thought was a certain way? And then you you realized along the way, no, I need to be doing this differently. It, it's one of those things that you learn as you go. For mm -hmm. me, it was I learned as I was doing it. There's no, there wasn't any book that I referred to, mm -hmm. but I realized I'm responsible for these children. I'm totally committed to care, and love, and protect these children. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how strong that got before I had you guys. Before, I thought, okay, well, eventually I'll become a mother, but I don't know what kind of mother I'm going to be. I had no idea. And then when I was in it, I learned as I, as I did it. Mm. And it ended up being a lot of fun and wonderful and things like that. But yeah, I had a whole whole different idea before hmm. so it was like getting thrown into ice water hmm. and you just have to react quickly uh, and figure out what do I do how to get out of here mm -hmm. you know that type of thing so you have to figure out quickly Louis CK talks uh, about he'll he'll mess something up and he's like oh permanent damage right there okay <laughs> moving on <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it is? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. I figured it, it would be accurate. Because you make yeah. a lot of mistakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when I got married, I said, I never want to have kids. And I was so decided on that. I'm yeah. not going to have kids. I don't want to have kids. I don't like kids. And then when it happened, like I said, that love is what sustained me. Because I kept getting more and more enamored and in love with you guys. Because you were all so different. Right. And that too. You were all so different. You all had your little personalities. Mm. Well, it took you Which three one? times to get it right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. finally, exactly. you know, luckily, yeah. ended up with me. Yeah. And so yeah. everything was, totally. was great after that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were an accident. Hey, um, so, <laughs> I know. Uh, which, which one of us was the, the hardest? Was it the first one? Yes. Because everything was new, yeah. everything was unknown, um, everything was, um, we were more and more protective of you than the other two, because as the other two came along, you kind of uh, slack off a little bit, and then yeah. slack off even more by the third and fourth and fifth one. Well, but... You were more relaxed. To that point, though, like, it was just you and Dad when it was... When it was Cass, mm -hmm. like at the very least, Cass was there with Amanda, and Cass and Amanda were there with me. Like, like it wasn't it wasn't just you guys after that point, you know? Yeah, yeah, o almost like I. Are you saying that I helped raise yeah. a little bit, yeah, yeah. Amanda, yeah. and I helped raise a little bit, yeah, you, you, you and Amanda, and you still and look I both. Both yeah, helped yeah. raise you yeah, as well. Very much so. Like yeah. you, you guys were there, and I know that you guys helped. Yeah. Okay. Anything, anything else you want to say about motherhood? I'm glad I experienced it. I'm so grateful. I thank God that I was given three incredible children, and that's that's the thing. You know, when you become a parent, you're given this child mm -hmm. for a very short time. And Dad and I were very much in agreement of this. You're given a child for a very, very short time, but you need to start helping them, teaching them to become independent because 
that day will come when they will leave. And they need to know how to be independent to create their lives after you raise them. So you only have them for that short little while and the time always goes so fast. Taking a look back at the consumer numbers, Mother's Day is now a $21 billion industry. That might be easy to dismiss this, as critics have put it, another greeting card holiday. But then you can look at the efforts of wonderful women like Julia Ward Howe and later Anna Jarvis, who really wanted a holiday that specifically celebrated motherhood and really the efforts of all parenthood. As Anna Jarvis put it, Mother's Day, commemorating her for the matchless service she renders to humanity. She got to see Mother's Day become official thanks to Warren G. Harding, who signed it as a national holiday in 1914. But then commercialization quickly took hold. Anna Jarvis became disillusioned with the holiday she had spent so long championing. Listen as she makes fun of you for the gifts you bought your mother this year. A printed card means nothing except that you are too lazy to write to the woman who has done more for you than anyone in the world. And candy? You take a box to mother and then eat most of it yourself. Anna Jarvis could have profited greatly from Mother's Day, but she felt it a principled measure not to commodify sentiment. She died poor with no children of her own. She was buried alongside her own mother. I think Anna Jarvis would say, if you buy your mother something, that's fine. Just remember, no thing that you can buy can ever come close to expressing a true sentiment of love. That's all your mother is asking for. For more One Minute History, please visit OneMinuteHistory.com. As my beautiful girlfriend said at the beginning of the show, my name is Kasanaya. This is my first podcast. Each podcast has a, an accompanying One Minute History video on YouTube. You might even be listening to this on YouTube. However, if you are listening, and whenever you are listening, first of all, thank you. And secondly, I already want to apologize for how rough around the edges this will be. I still have not narrowed down the format to a perfectly pristine idea so you can listen to this and hopefully go, oh, how quaint, that asshole is at least trying. And now I'd like to take a brief, selfish moment and say, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. You can listen to this whenever you want to hear me talking to you and talking about you. And whenever you need to hear me say, I love you, Mom. This is Ty, and I love you, Mom. This is Amanda. I love you, Mom. Was there anything that uh, you wanted to say to Mom? Anything else I want to say to Mom? Yeah. Um, that she is uh, awesome, <laughs> and I and I miss her, and I miss you guys, and I can't wait to see you, and uh, thank you for giving me a good childhood. Because, uh, uh, I guess I grew up to be not a fucked up person. <laughs> <laughs> <So> bad. <laughs> and let me ask you, why are we going to see you? Uh, for my wedding. My wedding that is occurring very soon. <laughs> yeah, the end of this month, right? Yes, it is happening this month. My wedding that is occurring this month, the end of this month, and I can't wait. And I'm really looking forward that, to that myself. So, uh, okay. love you, Amanda. Love you, Mom. Uh, thank you all for listening. This is One Minute History. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow.